Hello, it is a pleasure to be here with all of you today. Welcome to our webinar on protected areas and other effective area-based conservation measures and progress on Aichi Target 11. My name is Nicole DeSantis. I am a policy specialist on nature-based solutions with the Nature for Development Global Program at UNDP. I will be facilitating this webinar. Today, we are grateful to receive the support and participation from high-level speakers and project leads. To avoid any technical issues and deliver a high quality webinar, we have pre-recorded the presentations. We will begin the webinar with welcoming remarks from Alexander Shestakov of the CBD, followed by a presentation on protected areas and OECMs for biodiversity and climate agendas and sustainable development by Jameson Irvin at UNDP. Next, I will share a summary of the protected area and OECM country dossiers that we are currently creating, including details on the dossier elements and process. There will be time at the conclusion of the presentations for Q&A and discussion. During the Q&A session, if you would like to ask a question, you can either type your question into the Zoom chat box or you can raise your hand virtually uh, using the control panel and we will be able to invite you to ask your question uh, by opening your microphone. So to officially begin the webinar, I'm pleased to introduce Alexander Shestakov, Director of Science, Society and Sustainable Futures Division at the Secretariat of the UN Convention on Biological Diversity. He will share the welcoming remarks. Distinguished participants, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to welcome you all to this virtual informal session to introduce you to the stock-taking exercise that is being organized in collaboration between the CBD and the United Nations Development Program, UNDP. The UNDP has been an active supporter of the program of work on protected areas since 2006 and is a member of the steering committee on the Global Partnership on Aichi Biodiversity Target 11 launched at the COP14 in 2018. The purpose of this stock taking exercise is to uh, gauge national progress on Aichi Biodiversity Target 11 to understand the gaps in the data, the barriers in reporting, and to build support for ambitious targets for protected areas and other effective area based conservation measures known now as OECMs in the post-2020 global biodiversity framework to meet the 2050 vision of living in harmony with nature. According to the World Database on Protected Areas, the current status of protected areas and OECMs at the global level is over 16.4% for land areas and almost 8% for the ocean. It's likely that there are still many designated sites that have yet to be reported to the global database. Therefore, this stock taking exercise will aim to assist parties in assessing and updating the national information for different elements of IG Target 11 in preparation for the COP15 to be held later this year. This exercise will also encourage further actions to implement commitments through highlighting opportunities for progress on effective protected areas and OECMs. Following this webinar, developing country parties will be provided with a country data dossier with information on the status of different elements of Aichi Biodiversity Target 11 for their country, as reflected in global databases. For example, Information will be included on ecological representation, management effectiveness, connectivity, and the coverage of areas important for biodiversity and for ecosystem services like carbon storage and water security, among the other elements. Later in this meeting, there will be a detailed look at the information that will be presented in this country data dossiers. These country dossiers will also provide a summary of the various commitments made under IHE Biodiversity Target 11 over the past decade. 
Recent commitments by the world's governments have made clear their bold ambition for increasing the coverage of protected areas and OECMs. These commitments, if completed as proposed, would far exceed the 17% and 10% targets set out in the Strategic Plan for Biodiversity 2011-2020 and set us on a path towards meeting the goals for area-based conservation in the post-2020 global biodiversity framework and towards achieving the 2050 vision. Once the country dossiers have been distributed, parties will be asked to verify and update their information on protected areas and OECMs where necessary as a bottom-up, nationally-driven process. Further information on the proposed process will be presented later in this webinar. As a result, the stock taking exercise aims to establish a clear baseline in preparation for COP15 and to outline clear opportunities for addressing targets related to protected areas and OECMs in the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. We look very much forward to your active participation and contribution to this process. I wish you all a successful meeting. Thank you very much. Our thanks to Alexander for that important message and a summary of this project. We thank you and colleagues for sharing your knowledge and vision for working together to build on the bold commitments of governments to enhance progress for protected areas and OECMs. I would now like to introduce Jameson Irvin, Manager of the Global Program, Nature for Development at UNDP. Hello, my name is Jameson Irvin from the United Nations Development Program. Welcome to this webinar session on protected areas and other effective conservation measures or OECMs for biodiversity and climate agendas and sustainable development. Protected areas are nature-based solutions for sustainable development. We know from a number of reports that we're seeing sharp decline in species. We're seeing a sharp rise in atmospheric CO2. We're seeing increased tree cover loss, loss of soil organic carbon. And this means that we are at risk of leaving the safe and just space for humanity. Protected areas are one of several tools that will keep us in this uh, safe and just space. Protected areas are one of the main pillars for achieving the sustainable development goals. Nature-based solutions, especially protected areas and other effective conservation measures are indivisible with nearly all of the SDGs. They ensure that no one is left behind and they are a safety net for the more than 3 billion people who depend on nature for their livelihoods. Forests and the SDGs, for example, sustain 1.6 billion livelihoods, mostly rural poor. They provide medicines for 4 billion people worldwide. They provide drinking water for 5.5 billion people. And they're more than a third of our climate solution. When we think of oceans, fisheries, and the SDGs, oceans sustain 1.6 billion livelihoods, mostly rural poor. They supply four, more than 4 billion people with more than 15% of their annual protein. They support women's livelihoods. Women are 60% of fisheries workforce in India and 80% in West Africa. And oceans also sequester a third of all of our carbon emissions. We think about protected areas, they are essential for keeping carbon in the ground. In short, protected areas deliver effective, sustainable development solutions. When we think about the post-2020 framework, we hope that parties will commit to expanding protected area coverage to provide a global climate safety net that will include much stronger elements of climate connectivity, intactness, fragmentation, that we will safeguard indigenous land tenure and rights, especially forests, that will sharply expand finance and investment for protected areas as a viable climate and development solution that will set ambitious protection targets related to these nature climate tipping points. And that will upscale ambition for protected area restoration in order to keep nature's uh, in, uh, carbon stocks in the ground. 
There are four objectives of the protected area and OECM status project. The first is to help show how protected areas and OECM support the post-2020 global biodiversity framework, climate ambition, and the 2030 agenda. We will support countries by applying spatial data to help inform protected area and OECM data that countries can then set priorities for decision-making. We hope to demonstrate the value of protected area and OECM co-benefits to humanity and contributions to livelihoods, food, water security, as well as carbon and other benefits. And finally, we, help, we hope to identify gaps and opportunities to help you identify the gaps and opportunities for an increased ambition for protected areas and other effective conservation measures. Thanks for joining this webinar, and we look forward to following up with you to support you with the creation of dossiers and reporting, and looking forward to an ambitious and successful COP15. Thank you. Our thanks to Jamie for that thought-provoking presentation on the contribution of protected areas and OECMs to biodiversity and climate mitigation and adaptation, as well as achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. Now that we have examined the context and contribution of protected areas and OECMs to the broader biodiversity, climate, and sustainable development goals and agendas, I would like to look in more detail at the protected area status project including the project process and timeline and particularly details regarding the country dossiers that we are developing. Here is the presentation on the project and more details. Dear colleagues and participants, thank you for joining us to learn more about the status project on protected areas and other effective area-based conservation measures. This is a joint project with UNDP and the Convention on Biological Diversity that aims to identify and update the status of protected areas and OECMs across more than 100 countries in order to chart global progress on IHE Target 11. In addition, we are aiming to identify gaps in protected area data to highlight new opportunities for progress on protected areas and to outline a clear and spatially informed path towards ambitious post-2020 targets for protected areas and OECMs. To share a bit more about the status project process and timeline, for the first phase of the project, we are hosting three protected areas and OECM status webinars this week in order to introduce the project and dossiers to CBD focal points and to answer any questions about the support service. The second phase will be finalizing and providing countries with country data dossiers for Aichi Target 11. These will be done in batches and presented to countries in May and June. The third phase includes consultations with CBD focal points to update and validate the data in the dossiers. Following the webinar and the delivery of the country dossiers, parties are asked to please verify and update their information on protected areas and OECMs as a nationally driven process. We will be working with countries with a matrix to fill out on protected areas national status, and we can provide support and engagement via consultations as is helpful. The final phase will be the development of a report to be presented at COP15, which provides a gap analysis and an outlook to reaching the 2030 vision for the SDGs and the 2050 vision for biodiversity. This project is a joint effort between the CBD and UNDP and includes multiple team members from both organizations. We are jointly developing the dossiers and will provide consultations with representation across both teams. The Target 11 dossiers are a stock taking exercise being undertaken to assist parties in assessing and updating their national status for elements of IHE Biodiversity Target 11 and related national commitments in preparation for the 15th meeting of the Conference of the Parties. These dossiers will contain two main sections. The first examines protected area status through current publicly available information on elements of IHE Biodiversity Target 11. The second section presents the existing commitments made for improving the quantity and quality of protected areas and other effective area-based measures. These dossiers aim to provide a summary of current status and commitments to assist countries in identifying potential gaps and discrepancies. For this look at the country dossiers, we will examine some elements from the Fiji country dossier draft that we have started. So section one of the dossiers focused on protected areas and OECM status. 
and includes elements such as coverage, ecological representativeness, areas important for biodiversity, ecosystem services, connectivity, governance diversity, protected area management effectiveness, and other types of protection. The current reported protected area coverage and ecological representativeness are gathered from WDPA data. For example, Fiji's current reported protected area coverage from November of 2020 WDPA data is more than 5% for terrestrial and almost 1% for marine. For ecological representativeness, the number, name, hectares, and total percent of each ecoregion included in the country are captured, as well as the ecoregion percent and hectares under some form of protection. This data is captured from the Digital Observatory for Protected Areas, DOPA, and the UN Biodiversity Lab. Fiji has three marine ecoregions, with one that has at least 10% protected areas within the country. And Fiji also has two terrestrial ecoregions, though no ecoregions there currently have reached the 17% protected areas within the country. Looking at areas important for biodiversity, key data is available on the key biodiversity areas, and we gather this from the UN Biodiversity Lab. Fiji, for example, has 53 key biodiversity areas, 28 are IBAs and four are AZEs. Next, we look at ecosystem services. Total carbon in protected areas, including total below ground and above ground carbon in the country, as well as total carbon captured by protected areas. We can also look at surface water cover in protected areas. That includes total number and hectares of areas important for water instead of just surface water and includes total hectares and percents of areas important for water that are under protection in the country. For connectivity, the dossiers present the degree of habitat fragmentation, the number of biodiversity corridors, and the connectivity index for the country, primarily from the UN Biodiversity Lab and DOPA data. When examining governance diversity, we conduct an analysis of the percentage of different governance types. So in Fiji, we see that more than 72% are under Indigenous peoples and local communities governance, 11% are governed by the government, 2.1% are under private governance by for-profit organizations, 0.7% are under shared governance, and 137 do not have their governance type yet reported. The dossiers present insight on the protected area management effectiveness as well, including the number, hectares, and percent of protected areas that are reported to the PAME evaluations in the global database on PAME from the WDPA. The dossiers also present the change in forest cover nationally, outside of protected areas and within protected areas by percent and hectares as captured by the UN Biodiversity Lab. In Fiji, as of November 2020, the country has 146 protected areas reported to the WDPA. Of these, two protected areas have management effectiveness evaluations reported in the global database of PAME. When looking at other types of, of protection that are presented in the country data dossiers, we examine other effective conservation measures, OECMs, as available from the IUCN and other sources. We also pull in data on privately protected areas, as well as territories and areas conserved by indigenous peoples and local communities, ICCAs. This is informed by the ICCA registry. Finally, we also pull in as available biosphere reserves from UNESCO. The dossiers will also aim to include some case examples of other types of protection and local action. As an example for Fiji, the Fiji locally managed marine area network efforts have resulted in 135 of Fiji's customary fishing areas being managed and about 465 fishing reserves. As a result of the LMMA network and protection measures, marine life populations have rebounded and village incomes have risen significantly with increased harvests. We hope to feature, feature many other locally informed examples in the dossiers as well. Section two of the dossiers shifts to present the existing relevant protected area commitments. Elements of section two include the national priority areas, National Biodiversity Strategy and Action Maps, approved GEF-5 and GEF-6 protected areas projects, and GCF protected area projects, as well as also 
the UN Ocean Conference voluntary commitments that have been made by countries and other commitments related to protection across various policy types. The dossiers begin by presenting the national priority actions as captured from the 2015 to 2016 regional workshops. These priority actions include actions for multiple protected area elements, including quantitative aspects, ecological representation, areas important for biodiversity, management effectiveness, governance and equity, connectivity integration into wider landscapes and seascapes, other effective conservation measures, and other identified opportunities. Next, the dossier captures protection commitments that are made in the NBSAP. These include protection actions identified across various thematic areas, such as forest conservation and inshore fisheries and marine areas, and protected areas as well, as you can see in the examples for Fiji. Section two of the dossier also captures any nationally approved GEF five and GEF six projects on protected areas, with details on the, the type of project, as well as the actions on protected areas, such as coverage and so forth. The Green Climate Fund projects for the country are also included. Currently, we've identified more than 80 countries with GCF projects that focus on protected areas. Information will be organized for these around elements of coverage, representation, et cetera. The dossier further includes the voluntary commitments made at the UN Ocean Conference. For example, Fiji's government commitments included expansion of large-scale marine managed areas, improved climate resilience and sustainable livelihoods in Fiji, integrated coastal management to preserve ecosystem services. 85 countries also joined the Leaders Pledge for Nature during the UN Biodiversity Summit and made specific statements that mentioned protected areas. As an example, Fiji's Nature Pledge noted the need to significantly increase protected areas and OECMs in their land and oceans. In addition to the UN Ocean Voluntary Commitments and the Nature Pledge, the dossiers will also include protection actions across biodiversity, climate, and development policies. These were identified for 53 countries as part of the UNDP Nature for Climate Country briefings on nature-based solutions, and we will include details on this for the countries that we have them available. Finally, as a complement to the country target 11 dossiers provided to countries, we will also provide countries with a status matrix. And this will be a basic table, which aims to verify and collect information on the status of various elements of the Aichi Biodiversity Target 11. In addition, parties are also invited to note progress on national actions and commitments for Aichi Biodiversity Target 11. The country data dossiers for Target 11 are being compiled, as I said, in May and June, and will be shared with countries as they are ready. We are asking CBD focal points to please review your dossier, as well as to contribute to the data and the development that are in these by filling out the status matrix that will accompany each dossier. We also invite you to participate in consultations with us to discuss the country dossier and protected area status, to identify if any information is incomplete or outdated, and to explore opportunities for further integrating spatial data insights. Finally, we invite parties to build on this work and update the WDPA so that the data there reflects actual protected areas and OECMs in country and in time for COP15. Thank you. We would like to note that this project and the development of the dossiers is an exercise to support you and your work. And so we are looking to you, the experts on your country's protected areas and OECMs to help update the data and highlight your country's important achievements for target 11. We also would like to mention that the country dossiers will consist mostly of data, figures, tables, and maps, and will not be dense written reports. We hope that this will be more useful for your needs. As you review the dossier and add information to the matrix, we invite you to provide just brief summaries of the data and updated information that you have available. We now have time for a Q&A period for questions and discussion. As mentioned earlier, you can share a, a question in the chat or raise your hand to ask your question. Um, and I invite our participants, if anyone would like to speak or share or ask a question. 
One question that we have received in the last um, webinar that we did was asking about the deadline for sending back the matrix and information. So we will be sending out the dossiers in batches with the matrix with the aim to have all of those out to countries by the end of June at latest. So we are asking for feedback from countries by the end of July. And I'll just note another question that came up earlier was asking how this differs from reporting for the six national reports. So this dossier and uh, pro providing details in your matrix is not uh, so much a reporting exercise as it is a focus on a verifying data that is available. Our aim is to really minimize additional work and avoid any new reporting and instead focus on verifying and updating data in a concise manner. The sixth national report is a few years old now, and we recognize that some of the data reported there may be outdated. So we would like to ensure that we have the most up-to-date and verified data for the elements of Target 11 in time for the CBD COP. Okay, so I don't see any other questions that have come up. So perhaps, I will just thank you before we close, just to give a warm thanks to the presenters uh, from the CBD and UNDP for bringing this web webinar together. I'd also like to extend our thanks to you, our participants for sharing your time and knowledge as we work together to shape the country data dossiers for Target 11. We will be in touch soon to provide your country data dossier and the matrix, as well as some questions for you. And as I mentioned earlier, that will begin in June. And we will also be sending out invitations for consultations. Should you be interested in speaking further if you have any questions or you would just like to talk more about the data and the elements for Target 11. In the meantime, you can reach any of us using the emails that are provided here on the screen. So thank you very much for joining us. We look forward to continuing to work with you on this important project. Thank you.